Okay, everybody, let's take it from the top. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Broke Boy Media. And today we're going to be doing more of a formal podcast because we have a lot to talk about with the whole spider-man deal with sony versus disney and d23 2019 so that's where those are our two main topics we're going to be diving into today and before we get started just want to let you guys know that you can listen to this podcast on spotify itunes and anchor and you can watch the video version on youtube so we're going to try try to uh fit as much content in as we can and as always i'm joined by devin how you doing today buddy i'm hyped d23 D- our lord and savior disney d23 man they're they, they're killing it and i honestly through comic-con i didn't think we we're gonna get any more and then they're like oh yeah for totally forgot d23 is coming out i was like well that's probably more for like disney plus stuff which we do want to hear but three more shows all in phase four yeah add, adding that on we, we 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 have so much to talk about man but let's just let, let's just dive in uh we'll, let's just quickly talk about the spider-man news even though um we've recently heard or um through twitter kevin feige pretty much confirming that spider-man is no longer with the mcu r.i.p it's a moment of silence for our brethren in arms, Peter Parker. Save Spidey, please. Save Spidey. I mean, hopefully they can still come up with a deal, man, because all throughout this entire week, man, I'm sitting there, and then I get a text from you saying, you know, fuck Sony. I, and I was hope. like, what are you talking about? And then I was reading up. I was like, oh, they, they couldn't come it, to an it, agreement. It really was a bomb. What was it, like Tuesday? I think it was out? Tuesday. And it's what? Today's... Saturday? Saturday. Wow. The week went by really fast. And um, j- just as fast as Spidey uh, ran out of our lives, unfortunately. Or swang or thwipped out of our lives, I guess you could say. But yeah, this, this whole thing. So originally, um, from what we understood at first, uh, you know, we'll start back and, you know, uh, go up to date here that uh, Disney wanted 50% of you know the profits moving forward and people thought that was rubbish they thought it was crazy you're like oh you know disney is the worst company in the world and i was like well hold your horses there because there's a lot of companies out there that that are just as quote-unquote evil but somehow success equals being evil in some type of way shape or form but um disney could very well be evil but the oh, content's absolutely. Too, the content's too spicy. I'm gonna yeah, and, and we're not saying that we're not like, <clears throat> I guess, yeah, I side more with Disney a little bit, but I do feel like they were being like a little too excessive with that. But later on, we found out instead of a 50 50 deal, I found out that it was a 30 70 deal, and then Disney said no. And then later, I, yeah. Also, twenty five percent came out. Right. So, so who, knows, someone, who knows what the real story is? So someone had told me that you know Sony offered thirty seventy, and then Disney said no. But then I also heard through Culture Grave, the Twitter um, account that we um, follow, which is pretty much only confirmed news, which is which is where I really like about that Twitter page. <laughs> they had said that. Um, Sony offered them 25% and Disney said no, they want 30. So I really I, don't I don't, know, know. I don't know if there's any anything that real that came out. Like who knows? I think it's just going back and forth trying to pin each other on yeah. each other. And like these are two big corporations going at it with each other. And honestly, um I, I kind of get tired of hearing that Disney's monopoly. Because they're not. If they were a monopoly, they would literally be producing everything. Because that is the definition of a monopoly. It's it's a company that has exclusive control over a trade or service and just kind of dominates. I mean, a perfect example of like a monopoly in today's world would be like... Internet providers in yeah. certain areas. Well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Or, um, yeah, internet providers or cell phone carriers. Well, actually, technically, well, and, and sometimes I feel like 
they can be a monopoly, but technically they're an oligopoly, which is a little bit different, which is what Disney kind of falls under. Um, oh my God, sorry. And it's just, I don't know. It, it kind of bugs me because everyone's saying that like, oh, you know, Disney controls like majority of like the film industry. I was like, um, do you know how big Warner Brothers is? They own a lot. And everyone's like, oh, you know, this is just being greedy because, you know, they want Spider-Man back. I'm like, well, yeah, it is their character. And the only rights of Spider-Man that they do not have is They're the also film. doing like, all the, the grunt work, too. Yeah, um, you know, uh, fronting money for the profits. Not saying that Sony hasn't helped because, um, you know, Spider-Man uh, Homecoming and Far From Home were co-produced by Amy Pascal and Kevin Feige. So, you know, it, it, it was a teamwork effort, but you can't ignore Most of the that production was from yeah. uh, Marvel and Disney. Yeah, you can't ignore that, you know, Disney did make Spider-Man popular again. Spider-Verse was a great movie. But besides that, I mean, honestly... But Sony... That's a one-off. It's a separate entity, basically. Yeah, yeah. Sony Pictures, they're not that good. And yeah, I know, like, Venom made, like, almost... A billion dollars but like honestly so and, and this is like the sad truth and this is pretty much for any movie sony doesn't need a movie to be good in order to make a profit off of it but it's like that for a lot of movies too because you know we saw the lion king live action and you know as much as everyone loves disney there's a lot of things i disagree with disney i didn't really care for the lion king remake like, I, I just prefer the original. I think the original has more heart. You know, if other people like the more live action, national, geographic esque type, that, that, and that, that's totally fine. I, I have no problem with that. That is personal preference whatsoever. But like, Sony has botched Spider Man so many times. And it's Both like, the amazing Spider Man's. Like, there's a, reason that, there's a reason they came up with this deal in the first place because they couldn't figure it out. And it's like, honestly, like Sony as an entity, like, yeah, like they make TVs, they make Blu-rays, they have cameras and, you know, a lot of other hardware, but like they're, they're the two main things that when I think of Sony is PlayStation and the film rights of Spider-Man. And that's Basically. literally it. Because they do other movies, but you just, you just don't think about it. Well, they, think, they, oh, this they, is a Sony movie. Like, you don't hear that. Yeah, like, I mean, Men in Black, Angry Birds 2. And and what really sucks with Sony, they just lost, like, their third or fourth director for the Uncharted movie that Tom Holland is supposed to be. Is supposed it's to a be. bad week for Tom Holland, man. It really is. Um, But, you know, he, he pretty much came out and it, I, you, you can tell he's devastated. But he still will be working with Disney because he is in the new Disney Onward. Pixar movie Onwards which is really awesome. But I don't know, man, overall, like I, I get both sides of the story. And if I had to say at the end of the day, it's the Spider-Man fans who have lost this battle. They, they, the thing is, they still have a lot of time. Like they have it, yeah, a lot and, of time and they do because Spider-Man's not even in phase four whatsoever. Yeah. So it's like, they could reach another deal. And, and Venom, hope. Venom hasn't even been shot yet. Yeah. And I year. just, it's it's just gonna be so weird like because i mean obviously i think two more movies with tom holland like sony's gonna want to keep this going and it's like they're not going to be able to mention anything that's it's gonna to start over and it's like how how do you it's like that the one of the biggest cliffhangers in like marvel you know mcu history so far it's like peter's identity is revealed to the world it's like you really gonna leave people hanging like that though. And like, we were talking about in the group chat, one of the biggest things that's gonna diminish is the villains. In in Marvel, the villains that they set up were all so good and they were leading in perfectly to Sinister Six. Mm. But in but in the Sony Spider Man movies, the Amazing Spider Man's particularly, it's like, Oh, these are really bad villains. Um, <laughs> I don't like these. Yeah. Like it's... Rhino and they messed up Green Goblin. Blizzard was so average. Yeah, I, I would love to see a thing as Sinister Six, but not like rushed. Like I want them to. Marvel plan was it getting out. getting to it perfectly. They had they had almost all of it filled out. It was Pre so perfect. Yeah, 
And Kevin Feige wanted the third Spider-Man movie to be a Peter Parker movie, which I would have, I think a lot of Spidey fans would have enjoyed in general, you know, get away from the whole Spider-Man and the whole Iron Man feel and focus more on Peter Parker as a, you know, as a human being. But I don't know, man, it, it really does suck. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, these are two big corporations and, and you know, Sony thinks that, if, if Sony thinks that, you know, th they could do fine without, um, you know, Disney when it comes to Spider-Man, like, I mean, that's fine. We're like, okay, you know, like now we, now we know what we're doing. It's like, okay, I mean, it's time to see Uncle Ben die for a third based, time. Based but, on their past comments, I think one of their big plans is to just like shoehorn Spider-Man into the into Venom 2. Yeah. Which I mean, it, it, it would be make cool any for, sense. It would be cool for a little bit to see them together, but then it's like, what do you do from there? It's so bad. It, there's nothing though. set up. At least in Spider-Man 3, they had it to where because there is no Venom without Spider-Man, and there's no Carnage without Venom. So it's like, they're, they're all connected. Well, not according to Sony. Venom's just like an alien species in their well, movie. Well, well, which, is, which is true, but the way, the reason why Venom looks so identical to Spider-Man is because the symbiote in general kind of like it says like absorbs or like copies copy you know peter's power or spider-man's powers and then you know henceforth kind of like made venom because that was the, uh the symbiote's first house that we know of but yeah i, I mean it, it's it is what it is at the, like i said um you know these are two big corporations going back to back and at, at the end of the day do they really care about like, I, I would hope they care about the fans, but they probably don't in general. But, um, yeah. It, it, su it sucks, but I still think we're in good hands in Marvel. Like, good things to look forward to. Oh, yeah. I it mean, Marvel's not, not necessarily hurting from it, but it's like Spider Man is just arguably the world's most popular superhero. It's and, just such a cliffhanger they left off on. Yeah. Last year was such a big year for Spider Man. You had Spider Verse, you had Spider Man PS4, he was in Avengers, and everything else in between. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, just wish Sony the best of luck, and hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping they can still make a deal. They, they have so much time. I'm, I, have, I have some faith still, hopefully. Yeah, as of right now, it's just. It sucks. It, it really does suck, man. There, there's not much else to say about it. So we'll just uh, move on to the next topic. More we got a lot to talk about. Happier topic. D23. D23, man. Giving us a lot of goodies. Really? Honestly. Dis Disney Plus is going to just destroy Netflix. I, see, I am so... I'm just... I'm blown away by how affordable... And how much content Disney Plus is going to have that, I mean, even from just like their super, their older things, Face and Ferb, Sweet Life is Zach. There's, Cody. there's no downside. They're, they're hitting every age market, every possible. Everything. I don't think this is going to run Netflix out of business because Netflix has a yeah, lot no, of good they're shows. They're definitely still in business, but I think they're going to get hurt a little bit but i mean you yeah it's it's just Cause, crazy cause it, it's it's half the price of netflix isn't it it's yeah I, I, think, I think there's a 6.99 version that just gives you disney plus and then there's a 12.99 version that gives and, you and for 6.99 you get seven different accounts four screens yeah at the same time yeah and you get 4k included yeah disney plus will launch of with over 500 films and seven thousand tv episodes that's insane and uh, content with uh, will be downloadable. Each account can have seven profiles and stream on four devices simultaneously. Some titles on Disney Plus may include a bonus feature such as deleted scenes. That's really cool. So that's, yeah, I, it is a big bargain. I think the $12.99 version is going to be, I think you get um, Disney Plus, um, oh my ESPN gosh. ESPN Plus it, and Hulu. Hulu ESPN basic. is that's so random, but I guess it's, that's it's, cool. It's it's Disney. They're owned by Disney, so it makes sense. Did not. Yeah, and, and Hulu is too. Yeah. Yeah. 
like officially officially now that's I, if i didn't have hulu i would definitely do that deal but it's not really worth well we it. see we don't know if it's like the standard hulu or it like, is the standard hulu. it is the standard hulu okay we're well, already get that to spotify yeah same so i don't know that that is that espn plus though Mike might might, eh. might might come in handy man college you know <laughs> But e- either way, man, it, it's 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 great. I mean, starting off seven uh, seven bucks a month. Um, I mean, eventually, probably as it you know gains more popularity and as these new shows start to appear, it probably will go up in price. And that's just normal for all for all of you out there listening because it happened with Hulu, it happens with Netflix, it happens with everything. But um, yeah, man, Disney Plus is just going to be insane. Let's just get to a few of the. Um, a few of the big announcements, man. There's, oh, there's so much. The, the let's just start off with uh, Disney Plus original, the the Mandalorian, starting oh, on November twelfth, and it's going to be. I think they're only they're going to release one episode per week, which I actually really appreciate. I think it's I think it's smart. It builds up hype every week. Yeah, because people talking and like you can't like yeah like it's fun. It's fun as it is to binge through a show. It's like. I mean, and that's what I liked about Game of Thrones. You know, it, it wasn't just oh, here's all of season eight. Like this, it's only six episodes, so we're just going to release all of it. It's like no, it it does build up suspense. It gives YouTubers in general a chance to break down each episode for a lot of people who um, cover it out there in general, instead of trying to you know go through every single uh, episode that's out and then like continuously pump 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 out content. So. It's like you know, slow it down. Let's let's give people a chance to like marinate and digest it for a while. Talk about it for a week, and then see what happens next week. Like I mean, and I kind of do miss that uh, style of TV where you know it's it's once a week because you know it's it kind of sucks when it's it really like the only downside of the binging. It's like once you're done, it's like okay, now what show do I watch? And then you're trying to fumble around trying to figure out you know what shows are popular, what interests you, because you just watched, like, 50-plus episodes of, like, a sitcom or The Office or Peaky Blinders or uh, Stranger Things or something like that. So, but, uh, yeah, man, The the Mandalorian. And this is coming day one. Day one of Mandalorian. The trailer looks fantastic. The trailer is so hype. It's so it's, 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 it's Boba really, Fett or Jango Fett. I've never never been a big fan of either, but this does look very interesting to me. So I'm not sure. If, I think it might just be part of the the Mandalorian crew. Okay, the Mandalorian crew, and apparently but I, it's it's so cool seeing it's like it's the movie quality, but in a TV show. Yeah, for and so long they've had to they've had to sacrifice quality to make a TV show, but now mm-hmm. Disney has all these resources. It looks like a movie. Oh it's yeah, so cool. I, it's, it's perfect. It, it's it's absolutely perfect. They're, I'm hoping that carries on into the Marvel TV shows too. They'll look like movies, and you you won't have a, a drop off in quality. Right, and supposedly this is set after the Return of the Jedi, um, and the Fallen Empire. So it introduces a mysterious bounty hunter navigating uh, the lawless outer reaches of the galaxy. So. Um, and apparently there's also like, we'll, we'll go into the Star Wars stuff. We'll talk about everything Star Wars first related and then we'll hop into different franchises. So, um, yeah, man, Mandalorian is coming out day one, November 12th. I'm there. Disney, just uh, that's the ta- first thing take my money. On. Take my money. That's the first thing I'm turning on. Take that it. Day. Take it. I don't even just take it. Literally, I my soul is yours, pretty much. And apparently, so also, um, they're going to be doing a Rogue One prequel series, which I think is kind of odd. Um, it's untitled to the standalone, you know, Rogue One uh, movie. And Two characters that I really enjoyed in, in Rogue One. Yeah, uh, Diego Luna and uh, reprising his role as Rebel Alliance officer Cassian Andor and Alan uh, Tudyk. Also returning as a uh, droid K2SO. Uh, no release date has been announced yet, but the show uh, reportedly will start production in like 2020. So next year sometime, which is really okay. I, I can't say Rogue One was my favorite Star Wars. It was it was definitely an interesting movie to watch because you know it it explains so much and it ties everything together. It's 
and i i will say it is i i do like it better than uh <laughs> solo a star wars story <laughs> is that was just uh wow the only reason why i actually watched it was to see my girl amelia clark of course got it got a supporter in, in any way i can but um yeah i mean hey i mean a rogue one prequel series let's let's go for it it's definitely is one of the better star wars movies that doesn't have lightsabers besides darth vader at the very end but i will say that um that's kind of the reason why i watch star wars or part of the reason is <laughs> I, I like you know if if I'm watching a Star Wars movie I want to see some 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 lightsabers swinging about some some beams of light in in the air some some hands of flying and some heads of chopping so <laughs> I, I really liked Rogue One yeah I feel it man great then, great great movie I've even more it. Star Wars you Ewan McGregor. McGregor is reprising his role as Obi Wan Kenobi it's so perfect. The Scottish actor. The place, the place went wild when he came out. Oh yeah, it was insane. He appeared at D twenty three. Wild cheers, confirming that he will be rep uh, reprising his role as Obi Wan Kenobi in an upcoming series, which has already been written and will begin production in twenty twenty. And as we all know, Ewan, Re Ewan McGregor played Obi Wan Kenobi first, and as you know, the, um. In the prequel series, which uh, I know a lot of people aren't crazy about, but those are the Star Wars movies that we grew up on. So those hold near and near to our heart. And I'm more of an Anakin fan than I am a Luke Skywalker fan. I love Luke, but Anakin's the OG because he becomes the baddest mofo in the galaxy. So that is... Oh, and also, we have a little bit more Star Wars news as well. I totally almost forgot about this. Um, they released a new uh, poster for The Rise of Skywalker. And I don't know if we're getting more information tomorrow, but there was like rumors that um, there's some kind of like trailer or something or or a picture that's supposed to show uh, Ray holding a dual wielded lightsaber. Yes. I knew she was going to, that was going to have, soon as soon as she had that staff. And freaking Force Awakens, man, she was all like, mm, I'm like, she can handle that thing pretty well. I bet you she'd do awesome with the double sided lightsaber. And I, I'm very excited for that. I, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, say, say what you will about The Last Jedi, whether you like it or hate it. Um, you know, it's, it's Star, Star Wars is back, honestly. And I, I, I truly think that everything that is happening with Disney Plus. And Marvel series in general that we are entering a a second renaissance with um, Disney in general because the first renaissance was uh, their animated series. Well, the animated series that started off well, you know, like they had Pocahontas, Lion King, you know, all all that jazz. But I, I do, too do truly think that Disney is you know they've always been a great company, but they are. They're back on top, and for how long? Who knows? I don't know, but yeah, man. There's just there's so much Star Wars news. It's it's just crazy, and there probably is more that we're not even talking about. But you know, we're kind of just going off of like a few of the big announcements. Um, just wanted to uh, eat it chunk by chunk. But uh, let's move over into the uh, the original Disney library with uh, you know Lady and the Tramp, and uh... and. I I've watched Lady and the Tramp. I can't say it's my favorite Disney movie, but I'm a big doggo lover. I love dogs. So I'm excited to see it. I'll watch it. It's gonna be on Disney Plus. It'll give me more of a reason to watch it instead of, you know, going to the theater, buying a ticket, and watching, I don't know, a live action of The Lion King or Dumbo. I can just watch it there. I'm, like, I'm definitely gonna watch it, but I'm I'm just not looking forward to it. Uh, it's, it's just too similar to Lion King. There's just no emotion. True, and you know, th this also will uh, premiere on November 12th, uh, retelling the 1995 animated film about the prim little house dog falling in love <clears throat> with a scruffy stray. So that'll be pretty cool. And um, I, I do think it's really awesome that they used all shelter dogs for the movie. That's yes, yes, really that cool. that is one good thing. So we don't have to hear um, Peta talking about it in general because they are very vocal online. 
it's almost scary sometimes <laughs> but i digress it, it does look great i i watched the trailer earlier today and you know it's it's just just about two doggos falling in love because that's what doggos do and then also another news uh lizzie mcguire Hillary this one surprised Tom. me yeah this one this surprised me and a few things as marvel surprised me which we'll get into later but this surprised me the high school musical mockumentary surprised me and the jeff goldblum thing surprised me as well I, I will watch that show every day for the rest of my life <laughs> jeff goldblum daddy goldblum i need it all yeah but yeah um just really quick we'll get into jeff goldblum in a second i just want to cover lizzie mcguire really quick here so it's as for those of you who don't know who lizzie mcguire is uh it's a token teenage girl from the early 2000s uh returning in all as an adult in the new series Hillary duff is back she's back she's reprising her role and uh in the new series an all grown an all grown up lizzie is ready to enter her 30s and living her best life as a interior decorator in new york city there's no release date yet but it will be available on disney plus so that will this not... one this one really hits the heart of our childhood like it, for it me, really this is probably does my, this is probably my favorite like early 2000s disney channel show i think yeah I really between this it. that's a raven even stevens yeah sister sister was pretty funny too but yeah i i, I agree but lizzie mcguire was great a absolutely it's br bringing back the nostalgia they're hitting all the stuff and the also movie, the, the movie too oh dude the movie this is what dreams are made of <laughs> hey now hey now <laughs> <laughs> this is what dreams are made of um and also another news really quick uh, as we go down the list uh as we mentioned high school musical the musical series, um, uh, the mockumentary. So another revival of 2000s era culture. Yeah, this one's a, this one's a little past our childhood. So a little obviously. bit, yeah. Because I remember, oh, well, dude, my sister is listening to those. Yes. Sound, but not gonna lie, man, those soundtracks were like banging though. I, like, I never got into it, and um, and I haven't watched the trailer yet myself. But I mean, no, no Ted Bundy. No, uh, Troy, Troy Baker, aka Ted Bundy, aka Zach Efron, and Vanessa Hudgens. That would have been awesome because that would have, I mean, it's like, okay, wh whatever. But, um, High School Musical, the musical, the series, <laughs> that's that's very a, odd, but it's a very mouthful name. Uh, it's a fresh take on the beloved, beloved film trilogy. The show will be a mockumentary that follows its students. <clears throat> of east high as they complete um compete for roles in the school's production of high school musical it is set to pr uh premiere on disney plus um on november 12th as well so for all you big high school musical fans out there that should be something really interesting to look into i i mean honestly everything that they that they announce i i will be giving a watch at some point in time but now Let's talk time to talk about Daddy Go Bloom. Oh wow. <laughs> Daddy the Go Dilf. Bloom. The greatest Dilf of all time. The world according to Jeff Go Bloom. It's New just <laughs> Jeff Goldblum walking around talking to people. That's, right. That's all you can ask for. It, 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 it's a National Geographic Ge Geographic series. Yeah, give them some love. Yeah, you always got to. I mean, Lion King did it. Gotta do it. <laughs> Jeff Go Bloom. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the little synopsis here, uh, states that a new, the new Ge National Geographic series, the legend that is Jeff Goldblum, um, will follow Jeff Goldblum as he learns about things, um, that make him curious. It will include everything from sneakers to ice cream to tattoos. I know nothing is the premise, uh, Jeff Goob says Jeff Goldblum, and it is set to also release on November 12th. So a lot of stuff is going to be. Hitting off the market um, right there on November 12th. So we're, we're getting a lot of stuff. And D3 Expo will be running through tomorrow, which is really good. Um, trying to see what else before we get into Marvel news. Um, did they announce anything else that's really worth noting? Um, I know there's an uh, 
the, they announced Encore. Um, no, there's also the yeah, no, well, I was gonna say, I think that looked really good. A lot yeah. of great cast in that one. I, I, I think we're, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited for that one as well. It is just. It's a great time to be a Disney fan, no matter no matter what you say, no matter if you think that they're greedy. Guarantee you that your butt will be in that seat when you're Star gonna be Wars asking your friends to and or Frozen Two. Yeah, and exactly. you're gonna be asking the friends to get on their account seven screens or seven sharing. Be train those Netflix passwords for Disney Plus. Hey man, I'll let you hop on my Netflix if you give me that Disney Plus. Hey man, that's sounds like a deal to that's, me. That's that's a trade up. Yeah, that yeah, it is. Well, yeah, yeah, that's a trade up. But those will definitely be my two. I don't know, man. HBO Max is looking pretty freaking nice as well. I might have to look into that. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I'll definitely it, look into it. The only the one that's not. I, I think DC Apple Universe Plus. is supposed to be absorbed into that as well. Yes, I, I saw that, but I, I think Apple Plus is the one that's like I don't really care at all. What yeah, you're doing. Apple Plus streaming is um interesting to say. The I'm least. sure they'll have good stuff, but it's like. That's just too much. Too wait, yeah. It's. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'll definitely give it a try. Um, when I say try, I'll just, you know, I I have a few email accounts that I can sign up for. Unless it actually like, um, signs you up through your Apple ID, then you're screwed. <laughs> and I think that's what's gonna happen because everything else is, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much, um, everything non-Marvel related. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to Noel, and then I'm not sure what Encore is, to be completely honest. It was honest. that kind of weird show with Kristen Bell where they went, took people back to high school that performed in high school plays. Oh, okay, 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 I see, I see. Uh, it's like a reality TV show. I'll definitely have to give the, uh, trailer for that a watch as well. But yeah, that's majority of the things that were... Um, announced at Disney uh, D23 thus far. Uh, we are recording this on Saturday, August 24th, so we still have another full day of the Disney goodness that's coming about. But that's not all that happened. We got a lot of Marvel news to talk about today, folks. A lot of Marvel news, a lot indeed. Yes. Starting off with, what, four? No, three. Three, three new three Disney Plus. Three Disney Plus TV shows all in Phase 4. All in Phase Just 4. Just jam-packed. Got Moon Knight. Yes. She-Hulk and Miss Marvel. Yes. So yes. that's going to be amazing. I am very, very excited. And we got a little bit more information about the uh, What If series as well. Apparently, 23 episodes. One 23 episodes, movie. one for each movie. Yeah, Don't know how insane. that's going to work with Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be How a cartoon gonna... version of him so i don't know well um hmm, hmm. i don't know how that works well if it's a tv show yes i think they i think they're do have tv rights yeah it's, sim- it's, it's the same thing film with it's the same thing with hulk they have issues with hulk rights for movies but with yeah. tv they can use hulk whenever they want yeah because universal still owns hulk and it it it, it gets so crazy with like, oh, who, well, who owns this property? Who owns that? But it's like, okay, we understand. <laughs> we get it. But like the whole who owns who thing just gets a little tiresome, in my opinion. And I feel like it's a bit broken, but that is a discussion for another day. So, and oh, and we also got uh, the Eternals. We know who's going to be playing who. My boy, Kit Harrington is up. In this universe, let's go. It, people definitely thought he was going to get a bigger role, but I thought um, he was going to be Craven the Hunter, Wolverine, and or, or Moon Knight with the big rumors. Yeah, Moon Knight. May, see, I don't know too much about Moon Knight myself, but I, I did some pretty good research on all three of the new TV series because watching me, uh, Variant Comics on a uh, YouTube. <laughs> Actually, I just went to Marvel.com. They have great descriptions. Oh, do they really? Okay, okay. And it's, it's also it, uh, the 80th anniversary of uh, Marvel Comics as well, everybody. So uh, that's that's pretty freaking awesome. It. But yeah, uh, me. I know me and you. We're not like the biggest comic fans, so a lot of times we don't have all the information for all these characters. Right. And instead of just, I mean, as much as I would love to read through all these comics. It's just easier for us 
to go online and learn about these characters and learn about what happens in the comics. So I guess you can get just the basics of what's going on because I mean, growing up, like, yeah, I there there were a few comics that I had. I have a few Spider-Man comics at home, but I couldn't really tell you which ones because when I was younger, I was just like, I just want to read anything Spider-Man related because he was my favorite superhero. But I also had a few like Japanese manga or manga, whatever, however you uh, want to pronounce it. I had a lot of those com uh, comics as well. But I always just prefer watching the shows because it was just, like when I was younger, I just wasn't like the biggest reader. Even when it came to like comics, I just liked seeing the animations on screen and whatnot. But it, it really I mean, th there's a wealth of knowledge out there. You know, we, we have a lot of friends who who do read the comics and, you know, they it's it's a great source of information to. Uh, you know, just dive into in general so we are we're, we're very fortunate to have them as friends and yeah it's you know we're we're, we're big comic lovers ourselves but you know we, we're more on the movie side and it's as long as you know they stay true to the comic character you know their their roots so, so to speak um we're, we're we're all for it to be completely honest. I mean, they don't even have to necessarily stay true to the comics because obviously Marvel right. and MCU has done a great job of creating their own stories and their own yeah. characters. Yeah, and, and adaptation, as long... I'm, I'm all for adaptation because there... And people need to understand, and it, like there are a lot of things that don't necessarily chance well from book to screen, whether it be comics or, you know, just a, a basic, like, T uh, novel so like an example would be in Game of Thrones Sejora Marmont in the books is like short and hairy and he has blue hair no I'm sorry that's um somebody else or is it Jorah Mar I can't really remember it was either Sejora or one of Daenerys' uh, lovers throughout her uh, time within the series um, but yeah Clearly, that doesn't trans... Well, actually, no. A better example would be Daenerys Targaryen in the books. Um, number one, she starts she starts off as like 12, 13 years old, and she has purple eyes instead of, you know, Amelia Clark's... I think she has like hazel, brown eyes, something like that. So clearly, there's a lot of things that just don't trans well, transcend well from book to screen. Not everything is going to look as amazing as it does on a cartoon character as it does in live action. So adaptation is all about it. But man, oh man. Um, I mean, also in other news, well, who else got um, roles for uh, the Eternals besides um, my uh, Kit Harrington? I can't really remember. Do, do you know any off the top of your head? Um, not at the top of my head. Okay, that that's fine. I mean, if if we come to it, we come to it. But also, the cast, the cast is pretty crazy, though. Yeah, and I, I know it's it's pretty stacked, and that's what I'm very very excited about. But yeah, I was kind of disappointed that uh, Kid Arrington wasn't going to be a bigger role star. But I mean, hey man, he he got into the MCU, and he he's a great actor. And you know, as I've said in other videos, I am I'm a big Game of Thrones fan, and I I always love to see where you know the actors of game of thrones where they end up next in future projects you know amelia clark's doing a new uh christmas movie uh like a rom-com christmas movie looks looks pretty interesting um you know we, we saw sophie turner in um dark phoenix uh say what you will about the movie uh, you know sophie turner is a great actor herself and we have uh, Maisie williams she was in a netflix uh movie uh recently she played a little girl who had cancer and um she was also supposed to be in new mutants but disney's not too happy about new mutants <laughs> in general but for good reason yeah honestly i would just say release it um straight to blu-ray get it over with it's out I'd there say just put it on hulu yeah or or that honestly some, somewhere where people have easy access to view it in general but we also got black panther 2 release date may 6 of 2022 so far away so far away but 
you know, it's it's really good that Marvel is or dis I'm just gonna say Marvel. It's good that Marvel is setting up the future for phase, you know, for phase four and, and beyond. So it's you know, we haven't really heard anything about phase five, but I mean Kevin Feige did confirm at Comic Con that, you know, we're getting Blade and we're also getting Captain Marvel two. And he also announced that Black Panther two was in production there, but this was more of the official official announcements um it's it's just been wild man i just i can't i can't contain myself <laughs> I, I think we, i think we should do a nice little dive into these three new shows for oh the she hulk and everything else in between yeah i agree so i i definitely did some research on on the three of them i'm not sure how familiar you are with the characters um I'm really not, but you know, if if you want to go ahead and and explain it to the uh, audience, for especially people who have uh, you know not really heard of these characters, I've heard of She Hulk before, but I'm... She Hulk's pretty self-explanatory, just in mm, the name. Are you sure? No, I'm sure. <laughs> are you sure it's not Hulk? This is saying She all the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, go go ahead and uh, you know. So I'd say the one that garnered the most hype was definitely Moon Knight. People have wanted Moon Knight in the MCU for a long time now. Mm -hmm. I, he has possibly the coolest design of any hero in the MCU or in the Marvel Universe. Like his all white suit just looks so cool. I know he gets comparisons to like Marvel's version of Batman a lot, but that's really just kind of vaguely the appearance that kind of stops there. They don't really have any similarities in their background or anything mm -hmm. but basically his name is uh, mark specter he's actually um of jewish heritage so mm. i know they're gonna try to cast someone who's jewish as well try to get some rep representation for that that'll be interesting oh yeah so he's he was in his lifetime he was a boxer a marine and a cia operative that's a cool trio of things to do pretty badass and then he becomes a hitman and then kind of gets caught up in some things and then ends up it makes up some bad apples <laughs> and he gets these these really cool powers um from these like egyptian enti um entities mm -hmm. it's just really cool yeah, i'm so excited to see where they go from there okay that sounds really yeah I, I know he's been compared to batman a lot but that's pretty much all i really knew about him in general but that really does sound very, very interesting. And he's, his, his um, place of origin is Chicago, Illinois. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Hmm. So I've heard different things before, like Miss Marvel. I know that she was technically Captain Marvel at first. Well, I think Captain Marvel had the name Ms. Marvel first. Right. I think that was, that's but what it was. This, this Ms. Marvel is uh, named uh, Kamala Khan. Mm hmm. Um, so she's her own kind of Ms. Marvel. Um, she's a high school student in you know, New Jersey, Jersey City. Interesting location. Very interesting. And she's actually the first uh, Muslim superhero in the Marvel oh, Universe. Oh, did not know that. Yeah, she's, I believe she's of Indian-American descent. So it's okay. kind of cool that there'll be some representation for that. Um, her powers are really interesting. She got um, exposed to some some kind of mist chemical in, this, in New Jersey, <laughs> and got these powers. She's kind of like um, Mister Fantastic. She has the stretching ability, mm. but she can also enlarge like like things. So she, her main thing is like making her fists huge and just just <laughs> knocking dudes out. <laughs> Sounds pretty awesome, man. Yeah, her sense. her main backstory is that she always idolized Captain Marvel. And then when she got the power, she kind of just kept looking up to her and then decided to go with Ms. Marvel in her honor. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm digging I'm digging it so far. Marvel has... And it's another, another entry into a possible Young Avengers movie. It... Oh, you know what? That would be really awesome. I'd like to see that. I would definitely got, like to see that. They got quite a few options to add in there. Maybe yeah. Spidey, but who knows? And I know a lot of people were kind of upset that she wasn't getting her own movie, but... Um, there's this one guy on Twitter. She, she will she will be in movies too. They said. Yeah, because um, even with you know WandaVision, she she'll be in 
uh, Wanda Maximoff will be in uh, Multiverse of uh, Madness as well. So yeah, yeah, it's it's been it's been a crazy day, man. I'm trying to see what else was uh, necessarily out there. I know I sent you like a lot of stuff or earlier um also well um you know we we prim- pretty much got the nail in the coffin with the uh, spider-man um not being in the mcu anymore but um so apparently i uh, just want to segue back to uh Cyrus for a second so i guess footage from the rise of skywalker featuring a hooded Ray wielding a double bladed lightsaber will be released at some point today. I'm not sure if it's that's happened or not, but uh, Kid Harrington we said about you know he's actually playing Black Knight. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier, um, but it's uh, Jeremy Conrad. That was the guy. He was the one saying that people were kind of upset about Miss Marvel not originally being in movies, but you know him saying that it's pretty much. It's it's pretty much bound to happen in in general. So um, yeah, saw a little bit of the uh, how the demo of Disney Plus and uh, its its interface. I, I don't know. Was there anything else you wanted to cover? Or do you think we've uh, everything we wanted to touch on? Pretty much, unless there was just, something just, else that came to mind. Just take my money. Just get. I will give you seven dollars <laughs> right now. Disney, I was pay for my first subscription for the year up front, like yes. right now, so I don't have to worry about it forever. Oh man, honestly, c- congrats <laughs> to Disney, you know, and um, also, it's Alana Pierce's birthday from from Happy Fun birthday. House. Happy birthday, Alana, from the corner, dark, dark corner of YouTube, <laughs> where all the uh, aspiring YouTubers are, uh, you know, kept. But yeah, so it was her birthday, and um, you know D twenty three is going on. Saw two great movies this weekend. Got to check those. Two out. couple, a couple indie movies is nice two, two, and These indie movies are really taking over, man, and they're just killing it. I absolutely love yeah. it. There's, I mean, like I saw like a lot of people in these theaters watching these these indie movies, and I'm like, oh, both my theaters are packed. Yeah, I was like, I went, this I is went really to, good. I went to see Ready or Not last night at 10:30, and it was packed. 10:30, holy that, even crap! That late. Why did you go so late? I don't know. I just <laughs> wanted to. It was packed though. Everyone wanted to go see it. That it was too. oddly packed in my theater on a Friday. I mean, I get it. You know, like it's a Friday, whatever. But like, it was just more unusually packed as normal than than normal i should say uh, it was it was very very odd but yeah man so I, I guess that pretty much uh sums it up um everyone thank you for uh listening if um at home or watching this um if you're watching at home just again disney congratulations and um it's also the 80th um anniversary of marvel comics so that is something truly to behold um it's it's been a long way and it's it's really sad that uh stan lee was not here to um witness some uh you know something he's that he helped create between him and uh jack kirby um both of them are you know they're they're great heroes to a lot of uh, aspiring artists out there and you know they're they're both deeply missed so um i think that's going to be it for this podcast um for everyone who wants to you know follow us on twitter as i said before uh you can follow us there broke boy media uh broke underscore boy spelled b-o-i uh underscore media and I already said spotify itunes and anchor for the uh audio listeners and for the video listeners obviously you can find us here on youtube and we will see you guys in the next one whatever movie that may be i don't know i can't remember what's coming out next i have no idea maybe we should do Dora the explorer <laughs> we could a little late angry birds 2 maybe i mean no. you sure it's supposed to be in the movie of the summer man the summer is winding down but football season starts, so Heck yeah. let's go Steelers. I don't and think anything comes out next week. I don't think it I'm does. Not, I'm not seeing anything. I, w- I wanted to see Byron, Byron Banks, but uh, yeah. I don't know, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys in the next one. So peace out. <laughs>